Hi everybody, thanks for joining me today. I'm pretty pumped about this video um, and I actually wrote a script for this because there were a lot of things that I wanted to say about what you're about to hear and I wanted to say them in a clear way uh, and not ad lib. So it's gonna be a little bit more scripted than uh, one of my other videos. So today you're gonna learn something about polyrhythms and you're gonna watch me play some crazy parts um, to a song called Highland Air by keyboardist Lyle Mays. So what I'm really doing is just celebrating this unbelievable composition and I hope you'll really like it as much as I do. It came out in 1986 on Lyle's first solo album. Now as a professional musician, I've studied a lot of songs and I can usually figure out like the elements of the song just by ear after many many listenings to something so without the music but in this case um there was something about this song that i could never figure out a certain part of it and um it's been a mystery to me <laughs> this whole entire time now, helping to solve this mystery was discovering this book by Pierre Piscatelli. It's called The Music of Lyle Mays. It has 33 of Lyle's compositions written out in standard notation, including Highland Air. So I could finally see the parts that um, the band members were playing. I'll play some of them for you in a minute. I think it'll blow your mind. Uh, because there's this crazy polyrhythmic development section in the middle of this tune. So parenthetically, I'd like to thank my brother Mike and Steve McHugh and Wolfgang Plans for helping me prepare this video. I wanted them to share their thoughts with me about this tune and help me to just come up with the terminology to use regarding the rhythmic complexity in this song. So thanks guys. A polyrhythm, that just means that there's more than one rhythmic pattern going on at the same time. Okay, the listener could be hearing more than one rhythmic pattern simultaneously. So that means within a time signature of 4-4, four, four, the notes could be accented in a certain way where you start to hear a different rhythmic grouping like groups of threes. And I'll just demonstrate that by just tapping out some rhythms. So in my, in my left hand, I could do a rhythm of four. One, two, three, four. And in my right hand, I could do groups of threes. Okay, so that kind of plays a trick on your mind a little bit because sometimes you won't know which one to gravitate towards and to grab onto. Uh, so here's one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two. And if I stop the groups of fours, one, sometimes instead of hearing the threes within four, you might actually switch over to like a new time signature of three, four. One, two, three, one, two, and three, and one, and two. So it's kind of fun to have a polyrhythm going on. And in this song, it's even more complex because that opposing rhythm may not start on, a, on beat one. Like for instance, this rhythm. There are three attacks to this rhythm on the one E, and then on two and, and then on the three E and uh. And that's the kind of thing that's going on in this development section. It's, it's not too unusual to play something on an and or even the fourth, sixteenth note of a beat, especially if you play jazz, you're used to kind of syncopating, but to line things up on the second sixteenth note of a beat is pretty complex. So listen for that when I play these examples. 
So in Highland Air, there's four instruments that are layered and interacting with one another. There's the guitar. Now the guitar often has a saxophone and Lyle's Oberheim synthesizer, sometimes playing in unison with that. So there's guitar, piano, bass, and drums. And they all start sounding like they're all together in the same pulse, but in this development section, they immediately kind of break apart. It sounds like they're breaking apart from one another and into their own rhythmic patterns, even though they're notated in the same time signature. The song is in sonata form. There are three parts to that. So there's an exposition, a development, and a recapitulation. So what you're going to hear is occurs in the development section, okay? And that's where a composer would take melodic ideas from the exposition, right, earlier in the piece, and then manipulate them in certain ways in the development. Recapitulation just means that you're hearing the same themes that the composition started with. So I will play some of those exposition themes just so you know what he's working with when he alters them in the development section. So here's the main theme that you hear right at the beginning of the song. Then there's a secondary theme that you hear with that uh, real fluty, hollow, what's usually referred to as the Oberheim sound of Lyle. That's a synthesizer. It's a secondary theme, which sounds like this. And then there's a third motive that he will be using in that development section, and that comes from a little band groove that happens before the piano solo. And in the bass you hear... And the band sounds like... You're gonna hear Lyle doing that all through the development section. So let's get to the crazy polyrhythmic development area. Okay, time to hear the guitar part, and I'm standing this far away because I want you to see where the beat is in my foot in relation to some of the crazy rhythms going on here. then come together right at the end of that section that always blew my mind trying to figure out how that happened. Now on to the piano part. By the way, this section starts at the five minute and four second mark if you're trying to find it. So I'm going to be playing like the 
upper higher notes of the piano part. Here's the bass part. incredible. Uh, I hope that inspires you composers to uh, try to write a piece with a polyrhythm going on or a polyrhythmic section and uh, to study this piece Highland Air or just to seek out pieces that use polyrhythms. I know a lot of classical music uses it too. And if you can think of a good example, one that you know, um, tell us in the comments. Please like this video, share it with your friends, and if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. Thanks everyone for watching, I really appreciate it, and I'll see you at the next video.